I was 16 years old. I was driving my Chrysler Laser. I was proud to drive it. My dad bought it for me. I remember him buying it for $500, but he would get pissed when I said 500. He said it was eight. I remember five. The car wasn't very pretty, but that didn't stop me from being proud of it. That didn't stop me from telling Jamie Messmer that I would take her to the mall, the Northwoods Mall. We're going to go shopping, but first we got to stop by real quick my work. We got to stop by because they're building a little shed at the work, and I'm supposed to look at it. This is at Pet Rest Cemetery and Cremation Service. If you recall, those of you who know your pastor's personal history, we got to stop by. I said, now, you need to stay in the car because I don't want you getting out. I didn't want her to know too much about where I work, and uh, so we stopped by real quick. Now, I'm going to tell you something what happened to me. Now, I've only been driving this car. It's a stick shift, too, so I'm already a little bit clunky on the clutch, popping the clutch, a little nervous. Jamie was, was kind of hot to me back then before I knew what beautiful really looked like. This car starts. It's the worst thing that could happen to us. It's only about 35 minutes from Monk's Corner to the mall, but it's, it's, uh, it's raining. It's a very dramatic story now, very traumatic. It's a scar that I haven't ever shown anybody before. Star, car starts. And so I turned up the radio. Maybe she wouldn't notice how hard the car was shaking if I made it louder in the car. And uh, we got to a stoplight, and the guy said, hey, man. Your back left tire is almost completely flat. And that made me, I was kind of a relief because you can fix that, even though I didn't know how to change to the spare tire, but it was enough to get to the mall and enough to figure it out. But it's weird to me how he could see something from the outside that I couldn't see from the inside. And, uh, when, when we got, when we finally parked the car, I, I went and, and looked at the tire, and he was right. I mean, I, I didn't get out of the car at the stoplight because we were almost there by that time. And uh, we got there. It wasn't a very comfortable ride. We on into the mall parking lot. And sure enough, it wasn't real loud. But if you bend down and got close to it, you could hear. Show them what it probably sounded like, Bob. It wasn't wasn't that loud. It was constant. Because if it it had sounded like or something like that, you know, I may have even heard it while I was driving, but it didn't sound like that. It sounded like, because, well, at that point, the nail was still in it. Now, when we finally took the nail out, then it went. Because I, I had just been to a place where they were building a shed. And anytime you're in a place where there's a lot of construction, you have to be careful where you drive. Anytime you're in a, a church where there's a lot of growth. Anytime... When you're in an opportunity, remember I told you they were building a shed at Pet Rest Cemetery and Cremation Service. And so when I stopped by before I went to the mall, I wasn't careful to see what was lying around because of the construction. When I was driving into work this morning, I, I was, wasn't going to teach staff rally. I was going to slip in, but I heard, I heard a sound. I'm learning to listen. I, I, see, I see pictures like when, when God gave me the visual of nails for the sermon this weekend, I knew I had it because it was no longer just a principle. It was an image that people can take with them. And I figured if we get up and expostulate for an hour on uh, the virtues of forgiveness or show a clip from the passion of the Christ appealing to people's sentimentality that if Jesus suffered the lacerations on his back uh, for you, why can't you put up with your mother-in-law, that we might get a short-term response from them. Sentiment always creates a short-term response. But what I wanted to teach was more systematic. And the more I got into the thought, the the more powerful it became because I remember one time asking a great minister, what's the most important thing for me to teach my team at this young stage? He said, you'd better teach them how to live with offenses. 
because you can't avoid them. And the success of this ministry will depend on your ability to live with offenses if it's growing. Because the more growth that God gives to the ministry, exactly, the more nails, the, the, the more things move around, the more this happening. Come on, y'all. I'm teaching good for an unprepared pastor. And I heard a sound today. I didn't see an image, but I heard a sound today. I just heard a. I heard how it happens, not just in the big things from when we were 14 or our first marriage or not having a dad when we grew up. I heard, I heard a, do it real soft like you did before. I didn't hear a blowout, I heard a leak. I heard that that's where your joy gets stolen. Stolen, stolen in the leak. And when leaders leak, like when I allow myself to be too easily offended by one, one thing that someone says or what they don't say that they sh should have said. I lose the, the air. I lose the, I mean, I, I, I could get Jamie to the mall, but I couldn't get her home. <laughs> and uh, it stops your progress. And I mean, you can ride for a little while like that. And the craziest thing is you'll start imagining that you have to change the engine. Yep. You'll start thinking this is going to be a $1,000 repair. Oh, God, I need a new job. I need a new car. I need a new wife. No. You just need to fix the leak. If, if you can learn to fix the leak, you won't always be running around trading in for a newer model. And you won't be riding around. It's all right. Turning up the volume. Trying to drown out the dysfunction. If you fix the leak, 